All right, deep divers, buckle up. Today we're dropping right into a world where humanity's barely clinging on talking rats of the ruins. Got excerpts straight from the source, plus what readers are saying, so uh, prepare for things to get grim. Grim seems like an understatement from what I've gathered. Rats of the Ruins doesn't ease you in, not at all. It throws you headfirst into this world ravaged by World War III. Okay, so we're talking post-apocalypse, but for those who haven't gotten their hands on the book yet, set the scene. What are we dealing with here? Imagine this. The world's still choking on the fallout of this devastating war. Resources, forget about it. Radiation poisoning the land. Danger everywhere you turn. And I don't just mean the environment. Fellow survivors are just as likely to end you. Yeah, and if all that wasn't bad enough, there's an excerpt mentioning some power-hungry priest just fanning the flames, right? Exactly. He's a total wild card, this priest, using something called, get this, the Red Gospel to gain power. Seriously makes you think, how far would any of us go to survive when the world's gone to hell? Makes that line from the book's description hit even harder. A hardcore, grim, dark, and pessimistic glance in a possible future and upon the ways of man. Man, that's a mouthful, but it sets the tone. What makes this different from, say, your typical dystopian story? You hit the nail on the head with grim dark. There's a rawness and unflinching look at survival and rats of the ruins that you don't always see. It's less about shiny tech or, you know, the idealized hero, and way more about the dark side of what people are capable of when pushed to the edge. And speaking of getting pushed to the edge, some readers called out the book's length, like the physical thing itself. But we've got you covered. Consider this deep dive your Rats of the Ruins cheat sheet. Yeah. yeah. But got to ask, have you actually had a chance to crack open this beast yet? I have. And honestly, one of the things that struck me is how the author uses this whole post-apocalyptic setting to go beyond just physical survival. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about societies collapsing, maybe even rebuilding, but in the ashes of what came before. And it's not just about surviving the world, is it? The reviews make it clear. People are hooked on this story. Totally. There's this one review that just nails it. Hold on. I've got it here somewhere. Ah, thrilling with a desire for more was clearly my first emotion. Right. Like, that tells you something. This author knows how to grab you and not let go. Absolutely. And you know what else readers are responding to? The realism. Finally, one person wrote, an end-time epic in which the protagonists are not too stupid to close the door behind them. Oh, I remember that one. Made me laugh out loud. Right, but it's so true. How many times have you read something and just thought, come on, that's just dumb luck, not realistic at all? All the time. But it sounds like Rats of the Ruins steers clear of those tropes. Yeah, it does. And the characters themselves feel real, too. They're flawed, they make mistakes, but they're also learning and adapting as they go. That's what makes you root for them. One reviewer even said that reading Rats of the Ruins reminded them of playing Metro 2033 in The Last of Us. What do you think about that comparison? Interesting. Well, for those who haven't played them, Metro 2033 is this crazy immersive video game set in the Moscow Metro after a nuclear apocalypse. So you're fighting to survive underground against mutated creatures and uh, other humans. And then The Last of Us, which is a game but also a show now, that takes you across a post-pandemic America where, well, infected humans are the least of your worries. So. Pretty bleak stuff all around. Yeah, definitely not for the faint of heart. So what they all have in common is this feeling of desperate survival, moral ambiguity, like there are no easy answers in these worlds. And it sounds like Rats of the Ruins taps into that same vein, makes you question what you would do, who you might become in those kinds of situations. It's making me want to reread it right now. Yeah. But one thing that did stand out to me was a reviewer who said they felt overwhelmed at first by how many characters and plot lines there are. Yeah, it's definitely a dense read. But I think that complexity is intentional. Like, the author's trying to build a whole world here with all its different factions and viewpoints. And, and they each have their own story to tell. Exactly. And all those stories are woven together into this bigger picture. We do know about this one character, though, that pops up in the reviews. The Anachronist, I think they were called. Right, right. The Anachronist. Details are pretty scarce on that front, gotta say. Mm. But it sounds like this character represents something outside the established order of this post-apocalyptic world, you know? So more questions than answers. For sure. Where do they come from? What role do they play in this whole messed up society? I need to know more. It's like the author's leaving us breadcrumbs, just enough to pique our curiosity. And that line, man, that line from one of the excerpts about exploring the human depths, what does that even mean in this context? 
Right. Like how much darker can it get? What kind of depths are we talking about here? And that's what's got me hooked, honestly. It's not just about the physical challenges of surviving in this world. It's about the psychological and moral ones, too. It's like we're being dared to think about what we would do in those situations. Right. Like it's easy to say, oh, I would never do that. But this book, it makes you question everything. And a big part of that seems to be this red gospel that keeps popping up. You know, the one that power hungry priest uses to control people yeah what is that all about is it some real religious text they've twisted to fit their own agenda or is it something totally made up something born from the ashes of the old world and either way how do people justify following it especially with the brutality that priest is known for it makes you think about the power of belief doesn't it especially in a world where everything's gone to hell people need something to cling to absolutely and it's something you see a lot in post-apocalyptic stories that search for meaning, for something to hold on to. But it sounds like Rats of the Ruins really digs deep into those themes. Deeper than most. Yeah, I think so. This isn't just about surviving the wasteland or even other survivors. It's about the moral dilemmas, the choices you have to make. The lines you might have to cross. Exactly. And that's terrifying, honestly, but also impossible to look away from. It's like the author's holding up a mirror to humanity at its best and worst. We've thrown a lot at our listeners today. Any final thoughts before we wrap up this deep dive into Rats of the Ruins? If you're looking for a light escapist read, this ain't it. Rats of the Ruins is brutal. It's unflinching, but it's also one of the most thought-provoking books I've read in a long time. It stays with you, makes you think about the world, about yourself in ways you never expected. Well said. So, to sum it up for our deep divers out there, if you're ready to face a grim, gritty world and ask some tough questions about what it means to survive, this one's for you. And if you do pick it up, be ready for a long night. This is a book that will keep you up thinking about all the what ifs. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Rats of the Ruins. We'll catch you in the next episode.